guys, how's it going? Today I'm excited to give you an update tour of several projects that Aaron and I have tackled down here at the church we go to over the past few years. So a couple of the projects we've done this year, uh, and we brought you along for those, some spring containers that are still looking amazing in July. And then the containers on the patio that we planted up just a few weeks ago, flower bed area, we planted this October of 2019. And then the Arborvitas, was that in 2020? I think so, not sure. So this flower bed that we did in October of 2019, this is technically its third growing season because we planted it so late uh, in 2019. Before we go plant by plant and just talk about how things have done, I do wanna take you back to what it looked like when we first started. They had the area cut out, kind of the flower bed formed, the stones in place, but no plants yet. So let's take a look at that first and then we'll do the tour. fun to go back and see how things looked in the very beginning. I think all of us need to do that more often because I think we all get more done than we think we do. <laughs> we just kind of forget about it. I wanted to start kind of backed up from the large flower bed area because we have done a couple of things here. Now this I think is Munstead Lavender. It looks absolutely fantastic. We did not plant this but it looks so good. This is Carl Forrester Calamagratus right there. Ornamental grass that stays kind of put like it kind of clumps out but it's just a beautiful upright structure and it doesn't tend to flop like it stays really nice and tight. There is a Vanderwolf pine right here for an evergreen element. And then this is the fluffy Arborvita that we transplanted out of one of these containers over there this spring. And it was a beast, you guys. I didn't get as much of the root ball as I hoped. And cutting through the land, for some reason there was really tough soil here, landscape fabric. You can see that there's still a lavender like kind of popping out from behind, let's see, let's go around this way. Yeah, I could tell that there was still lavender there, but I put the tree in here anyway, and it's looking so good. Doesn't that color look amazing with the lavender? Oh, then there's a barberry that I'm not unsure of the name of because I didn't plant that one. And let's take a look through here. We've got Boogie Woogie Sedum first. It's in full bloom, look at this. Looks so good. So you've got the creamy white edges, with the green in the center and then the bright yellow blooms. I just love it. Now we, I don't think, did we run drip to these? We didn't actually run the drip, but we just tucked three in right here, right below the stone, just to kind of fill in and tuck in under the rock. And I wanted to start low here and kind of work my way up. So then we have the Sunjoy Mini Maroon Barberries, which barberries we can plant in our area. They are not restricted. I know that they are um, restricted in a lot of states, but these stay this size right here. Isn't that just the perfect size? Because then you don't have to you know, feel like you need to prune them all the time to keep them in check. And they're just a perfect contrast right here. Cat's Pajamas Nepeda right here. This could use shearing uh, probably any time now. You can see its second flush of blooms is actually like pushing through um, the top of this canopy. So we could come in and shear back the blooms that are kind of laying toward the outside here. But there's still a lot of honeybee activity on them. I mean, you hate to cut them back when there's still some color. And I mean, look, they're just honeybees all over these plants right now. They still look really nice. Super low maintenance plants. One of my favorite perennials ever. Then we have an oh so easy double red rose right here. Now the wonderful thing about these roses is that you can come in and deadhead them if you want to. So you could come in and remove all of these. Although, you know, they will kind of dry up and fall off on their own. 
um, but you don't have to deadhead these in order for them to keep blooming. Like they will just keep on performing no matter what, no matter if you deadhead or not. So they're always in some sort of color. And if we would have been down here just one week ago, all the roses were kind of in peak. I was a little bit of a later season and maybe that's why everything looks so good right now uh, because we had a lot more rain than normal and it was a lot cooler than normal, but our rose season was way off from when it normally is. But just one week ago, all of our roses were looking so amazing. And most of this whole shrub was just colored, uh, covered in like bright, uh, saturated color. But it's kind of getting to a point where if it was in my landscape, I would probably deadhead it a bit. But it's a perfect variety for a situation like this, kind of more of like a commercial application or if you want to put it somewhere Sorry, you guys, it's a really busy road. There's a lot of like tractor activity. <laughs> so it's, if it gets loud, that's what's going on. Anyway, if you want a low maintenance rose just to tuck in that you just don't mind if it's not deadheaded, this is a great option. Here is a fluffy arb right here. Looking pretty good. I had to prune quite a bit of this because there was a lot of winter kill on it. And you can still see a little bit of crunchy stuff that maybe like formed after I pruned it, but it's still got a lot of nice new growth and it's still nice and bright. Denim and Lace Russian Sage is another one of my fave perennials because of how low maintenance they are. Um, they just started to open up blooms. Like, are they even open? Maybe, they're all butted up. Just barely starting to open up. Anyway, these bloom through the rest of the season and they usually start right about July, like dog days of summer and they start looking amazing. So when I was growing up, my mom always stressed, you know, look for four different colors in the landscape, red, yellow, blue, and green. And even if it's just a little accent of one of those, if you have all four of those, and I've talked about this before in videos, if you have all four of those colors, it just creates a really beautiful kind of contrasted, cohesive design. Check it out. Red, yellow, blue, green. Aren't they all beautiful together? Ugh, love it. Cheyenne Sky uh, Panicum right here. Gorgeous grass, very soft, looks really pretty with the stones, I think. Just a nice um, break in color, just to have a foliage accent. Now this one, especially as the season progresses, gets more and more red. So in the fall, absolutely gorgeous. Then we've got a Poly Petite Rose of Sharon right here. Whew, just tried to get, <laughs> that's a larger stone than I thought. Ooh, trying to get over it. All butted up. Soft pink blooms on this one. Stays a lot smaller than normal. Rose of Sharon's has beautiful leaves. Look at the leaf structure on this. It's so unique. So I think we've got maybe another week, maybe a little bit longer to where we start seeing some color on this one, but a beautiful, healthy shrub. Another Cheyenne Sky right here. This is really the only replacement we've had to do in this area. So we had an Engelman spruce in this area and it just did not take. It looked a little bit stressed when I planted it and I'm not sure if maybe water was an issue or I, I don't know, it just didn't survive. And that happens, especially when you plant this many things, you expect at least one thing not to um, thrive. Anyway, so I dug that one out this spring and popped this weeping Colorado blue spruce in here. I was gonna come along and stake it, but honestly, with the height of everything, I might just let it kind of fill in and do its thing around these rocks. It might be really pretty. Next, we have some Arctic Fire Dogwoods. Now these shrubs love it right here. Like this is their full size for sure. Like maybe even a little bit bigger than the tag says. Cause does the tag say they get to five feet? I can't remember if it's like three to five feet. Anyway, they're taller than me and I'm five four. I, I cut on these really hard every year. <laughs> So anyway, they're doing beautifully here. They're really actually a, a nice little screen right here. This is one starting to bloom a bit. Must be one of the branches I left alone this spring, but beautiful color in the winter time. And then we have another fluffy arb right here. Nice bright pop. And I like that there's yellow here and yellow right over here. It kind of just like brings the area together. In fact, you'll notice that I like to do a lot of repeat when I'm doing a flower bed because it just brings some cohesion to the area. So another Cheyenne Sky Panicum and then a Nepeta right here. Another Denim and Lace. I did put a Bloomerang Dark Purple right in this area. And you can see where it bloomed out like crazy this spring. On these Bloomerangs, you can go in right after they're done blooming and you can clip right below the bloom panicle 
and clip that off so that the plant doesn't send energy into forming seeds. See all those pods right there? And that will help bloom productivity for the rest of the season. It's definitely not something you have to do in order to see more blooms through the season, which is why we like to plant bloom meringues, uh, but it does help. You will get more blooms if you direct more energy into bloom production. It makes sense. And then there's a Celtic Pride Siberian Spruce ground cover. This is my very first experience planting one and it likes this spot and it's gorgeous. It's really soft, like you expect these ground cover type evergreens, like most of them that we have in our area anyway are junipers, which can tend to be really pokey and a total pain to work in. But these are like nice and soft, like you can get your hands right down in here if you need to get, you know, leaves and junk out of here. That's really nice. And then moving back, first of all, like this right here is the stunner. Oh. So we came and planted this Gatsby Gal Hydrangea in September of 2019. So it was actually prior to the flower bed that I just showed you. Isn't that amazing? Oh, these grow five to six feet tall and wide. So you can see it's definitely hit its width capacity or whatever potential. Um, it has the potential to grow a little bit taller. This one, the color in the fall is intense and gorgeous, but look at the leaf structure in here. And the bloom panicles are massive. Like, look at this. Oh, I am just so thrilled with how this plant is doing. And we did plant a blood good Japanese maple at the same time. And to be honest, like, I don't know if they've been pruning it this way. I love it. Like it's filled in and kind of just softened this corner exactly how I was hoping it would. Just absolute, just beautiful. Then there's another Carl Forrester right here. And then this is one of the spring containers we did. This one doesn't look quite as good as the other one. Um, like there's a little bit of grooming that I could do on these. I actually brought plants today to pop the pansies out and just put some fresh stuff in. I don't think I want to do it. I mean, we do have some days. It looks like at the end of our 10 day, it's going to be 104. We have three days in a row of that. That's what it says at this time. Uh, that might hopefully change <laughs> by then. The pansies will probably peter out at that point. But you know what? Maybe I'll just hang on to the plants and come back later and do it. They just look so pretty. I think, I don't know if it's just the blue and the chartreuse combination, but I just have been loving that this year. So this is the pot that that fluffy arborvita in the front that I just showed you that we transplanted. This is the pot it came out of. Great big clay container here. They are on drip. There's a um, green giant arb in the center, which these when I planted them, they had been shorn into like a cone shape and you can see it's getting a little bit of its fluff back. Uh, a hookera, I can't remember the name of. Uh, they were in a red can. <laughs> I don't know uh, what variety that is, but they are clearly loving it. The Golden Creeping Jenny, which I think this is the best performance I've ever seen out of a Creeping Jenny in one of my containers anyway. And then Blue Pansies. I mean, fairly simple. I did have some stock in there that has fizzled out and gone away, but oh, gorgeous. There is a spruce of some kind. I didn't plant this one, so I'm not sure what that is. My mom probably knows though. I probably should ask her. It looks like a Weeping White, but it's got like this weird arm that I don't normally see out of a Weeping White spruce. I don't know. And then another Carl Forrester here lavender and the pot on the other side oh my goodness this is why i can't pull the pansies out look at them i mean they could use deadheading or not i mean who cares they just look so good there's so much beautiful color and the hookahs are doing really well this one gets full on normally morning sun it's kind of overcast today uh, morning sun a little bit of protection in the afternoon and maybe I don't know, maybe that this one gets a little bit more light than that one. Maybe that's why this one's like a little bit more full. Uh, but you can see the Creeping Jenny looks gorgeous and very uniform. The hookahs look great. I love this color of bloom right here. This looks a lot like a black pearl or like crimson, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's got pink buds with the creamy white blooms. You can see the leftover stock right here. They form these kind of weirdo looking seed pods here little like uh, almost like chalk fingers but green and the green giant looks really good just really pleased with those and in this area there are more Carl Foresters and then these are blue chiffon Rosa Sharon so these once they start blooming if we can have them bloom at the same time that these pansies are going it's about the same color so we'll see this right here 
mirrored in these two large shrubs. So all the plants in the ground we put in in 2019 in the fall, and then these containers I did this spring. So while we're over here, let's pop out and look at the Arborvita hedge. I don't think they've had to replace a single one, and they look amazing. Now I'd probably have to look up and watch the video to see how many we planted here. I did look at the date though. It was March 4th of 2020 when we planted all of these. All of these. Oh. Aren't they looking so good? Like there's some that are taller than others, but they're all a brilliant, beautiful deep green. And they're all just starting to really fill in beautifully. I always like to look at a hedge from a side like this. <laughs> so it looks like it's really a hedge at this point. You can see there's what, about like a foot and a half distance between them. I can't remember exactly how far we went, but North Poles grow 10 to 15 feet tall and three to five feet wide. And I think so long in our area as they get enough moisture, they'll probably reach the higher end of the maturity. Um, so I'm hoping that they get the five feet wide, 15 feet tall, and that will be, that will be a hedge. And maybe we can throw back and show you guys how this area looked to begin with as well, like we just did with the front uh, flower bed, uh, because I think it was the first time we really put the large auger to the test and it really did make things nice, nice and quick. So the last thing I want to show you today uh, is the pots that we planted just a few weeks ago. I will look up the date on my walk over there because I can't remember exactly the day that we were here, uh, but it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. I just stopped and looked up the date. It was June 9th. So today is July 5th, almost one month ago. I do want to show you a couple things though on our walk because there's some beautiful flower carpet roses in gorgeous bloom. They do a really good job with the upkeep here. So look at this, the flower carpet roses, again, kind of in the same state. If I would have been here a week earlier, my goodness, would these have been bright and gorgeous, but still full of color. Black lace elderberry. Um, a lot of times we have to have these little swells here uh, for drainage. There's uh, Vanderwolf pine, more black lace elderberry. There's some Euonymus down here. But I just thought that these looked so pretty. Lining the walkway, such a low maintenance, easy rose. Oh, really beautiful. Okay, so 10 containers, I think, right? Two, four, six, no, seven. <laughs> seven containers and just one month of growth. Look at these. Really starting to thicken up and fill in. And a lot of stuff just looks like it's brimming, like it's about ready to start spilling over. Uh, but we will link the video down below where we planted all of these things so you can get names if you'd like to. Uh, but like this is a brand new osteo. It's like Bright Lights Horizon Sunset or something. Anyway, it's new for next year. We're just trying it in several locations. So I've got it at home. We've got it here. It looks great with Superbell's Plum. I love that. Looks great with the Raven. So far, this one's doing really well. This side, we've got a canna in here, which I can't remember if this is yellow or coral. Let's see if we can find some evidence. I seem to remember it being coral, but it's really thickened up, like a lot. That's amazing. So typically with these, you'll come in and deadhead those out, but it's forming brand new stalks all over. So it's gonna be thick and full of color here very soon. But I really like the uh, foliage as well, just that really bold texture. Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime, Superbina Imperial Blue right here. 
uh, which these looked fairly leggy. I talked about it, how leggy and kind of sad Superbina looks a lot of the time when you get it out of a container, just takes it a minute and starts thickening up and putting on color. Ours at home are looking really good. Super Tunia Raspberry Rush right here. I'm really liking this one this year. I'm usually not a striped petunia fan, but I really like this one. And then a new lantana called Luscious Citron. Doesn't that add just a nice bright color in there? It's full of buds too. Okay, next corner. We've got Prince Tut, Super Tunia Jazzberry, Vista Jazzberry. There's a Lobularia. This one needs to get going because this, these uh, Jazzberries are really wanting to take it over. Typically these can hold up though. That's the Violet Night Lobularia. Got another raven right here. Loving using the dark colored potato vine this year as well. And there's a lobelia in there. <laughs> Probably cannot hold up to the vigor of the jazzberry, but I just thought they were such a pretty color combination. Then over here, we've got a centerpiece of the unplugged pink salvia, which is getting just swallowed by the jazzberry. I was a little unsure if I should plant that as a centerpiece in this one. I did this last year, but with a Vista bubblegum, and I thought, well, maybe the jazzberry, because I don't have as much experience with it, maybe it's not as aggressive as the bubblegum, so maybe the unplugged pink will have a chance to like, get up and get going as a centerpiece first, but I don't know, we'll have to see how it goes. Got a lot of nice color. Surrounded it with white geraniums. Superbina Imperial Blue, doesn't that look awesome? And then, of course, the jazzberry and another lobularia here. This one right here just looks kind of classic to me. Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum. There's Super Bell's Plum in here. Uh, purple Fountain Grass. This is a Sweet Hair Caroline Sweetheart Lime. And another Super Bell's Plum in here. Then we've got a couple of shade containers, which I've been struggling a bit with the sweet potato vine. So I told them I'd take a kind of a closer look. I might replace these because they're looking a little bit, I don't know. I mean, there's, I can't find any bugs on them at all. It looks like a scorch or something, but they're in the shade. It doesn't make any sense. Everything else looks good though. Prince Tut there is a centerpiece and then the double up red begonias. Yeah, this one I need to replace for sure. Pretty good though, out of the amount of plants that we put in to only need to do a few or one really replacement. I probably just clean that one up. This one looks like it just needs to be cleaned up too. One replacement's not bad. And then the last one is the shade, kind of all shade container where we have the Limetime Coleus, Wicked Witch Coleus, the new one called something mini something watermelon. <laughs> it's a new for next year. It's awesome texture. Diamond Frost Euphorbia, another Sweet Potato Vine Sweetheart Lime. And then this is the brand new Upside Black Coffee Sweet Potato Vine. Look at that one. Oh, holy moly, it is just going for it. Another diamond frost there. And a view from the other side. More coleus, more diamond frost. Looking really good. Kind of a fun fact about these containers. The gal who's taking care of these, her name is Trina. She's doing a beautiful job. She and her husband are the ones who bought Aaron and my townhouse before we moved out to the house that we live in now small world. I think that is it for our update tour. A lot of things that I just wanted to show you how they were doing, especially those things that we planted, you know, almost three years ago now. It's kind of nice to revisit those areas and really see what kind of growth specific plants put on um, and how they do. And it's different based on the area. Like I have some Gatsby Gal hydrangeas that haven't done nearly as well as the one down here. I think that's because of location. Honestly, that one is so protected right there. It does not get very much sun at all. And it's still performing with a ton of bloom and it gets really good fall color. So I really like to plant things in different areas. And now I can note what kind of conditions that specific plant is in. And then I can try to emulate those kind of same conditions at my own house in my own garden and hopefully get the same kind of results. The whole thing is just a really fun learning experience. So I will be bringing down maybe one or a couple different sweet potato vines to replace the ones that aren't doing as well. Uh, but it's good if we can catch those things early in the season, we'll get them replaced and then they'll have a chance to grow and the, the planter will look full and beautiful in no time. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We will try to remember to link all of the videos that go with all of these projects down below. And there are other ones where I've come down and maintained, like this spring I came down and just maintained the big flower bed and cut things back and fertilized and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, hopefully that if you go back and take a look at kind of the progression, you can see how we've treated the plants and got them to where they are today. So I feel like I'm rambling at this point. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.